While you guys are checking in, tell me where you're watching from. I love knowing where everyone's watching from all over the world. We took our Bob Ross Liquid Clear. Looks just like this. Mine's about empty. It's just a clear liquid, uh, a clear liquid oil blending medium, right? That goes onto the canvas and makes it nice and wet. We teach wet on wet oil painting over here, which means we take wet paint from our palette and put it onto a wet surface, right? Now, got to have that surface be wet with either linseed oil or some sort of something or other, right? Very neat. Guys, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Oh, that's cool. Wicked. Hey, what's happening, Armand? Let's get some people in here, guys. Right, so we took our Bob Ross, we took our Bob Ross Liquid Clear. We covered our entire canvas, right? Bob Ross Liquid Clear covered the whole thing. Then we took crimson and blue and put it all over the canvas so we can basically paint with white paint and have all these colors shine through. It's going to be fan-freaking-tastic. So let's get our brush just all crazily full of paint, right? Going to get a little fan brush and go through our white. Just like this nice thick white paint, right? You don't want to have it be thin. You got to have that thick oil paint on there, right? Real crazy like. And then we'll come up in here and we're going to just take this paint and go crazy on the canvas. You ready? Just like this. Right through that pink, right through all of that. Bang. Just have it nice and bright right there, right? And then what we're going to take our brush and do is push with a lot of pressure. And as we hit it with that pressure and go straight up anywhere that that color is touching, it's gonna interact with the other colors underneath. Be very cool, look at that. Get the blue, get the crimson, get this whole little one stripe action. Just like that, swiping these little bits down. This very cool little color back there. Very neat, just awesome. Little bit of a, just a little, just a little Aurora Borealis, right? The more you push on it, the more it's gonna streak up into the canvas, right? But the more blue you're gonna catch from up there and deposit back down here, so. Kind of judge on what you want it to look like. You can always go back and make it a little bit brighter. Always do that, right? Say we wanted to get a little brighter with our crimson back into that titanium white paint. And we come right through here like that, just all crazily, right? A couple little dabs. Now, the more that we push on it, the brighter little streaks are gonna shine through, right? We're gonna drag up a bit more in those little areas. And you get all these little auroras start to come down and land on our our atmosphere down here. It's gonna be wicked awesome. So swiping up and down across the whole thing, get this gorgeous little Aurora sky. Gonna be very cool for our little easy, little simple little canvas today. Just a nice little canvas. So just by taking a little bit of blue and a little bit of crimson across our whole canvas and then painting with white paint, we're gonna allow all these little things to shine through. It's gonna be fantastic. You guys can tell me where you watch it from. What's your favorite sandwich? And let's come in with like a little far off. We can even do it over here. Just a little far off bit of land, right? Take our one inch brush like that. And who knows, maybe off in the distance down there. It's this little far off little hill way underneath that stuff. Way back there, right? And then we can take it and blend it and pull it down from other edges. Do all sorts of stuff with it. Create these little snowy hills. See how I'm kind of pulling down from that same little pivot point like we do with our waves sometimes. All right, come back into here. Wherever we take our brush and slide it down, we're going to have this wicked, wicked little interaction with the paint that's underneath, right? So anywhere that you go and touch with that white, it's going to allow it to pick up little different colors and different things. And then we're going to blend it and blend it and blend it. Watch this. Taking this guy right up to the top. A lot of pressure. See my brush bending the entire length? Just crazy, right? crazy amount of pressure to be able to pull down on that. And then whatever, whatever brush, you know, color that you pick up, you can create little shadows where there's light areas and dark areas. Go back to our white, just like this. And who knows, maybe there was like a, some sort of a little, there we go. A little bit of a ridge back in here. Just lighten it up wherever we want it to be, right? Just having it extend out, get our whole little snowy meadow to come to life over here with all these colors, guys, it's so pretty. And it's so simple and easy, right? Just depends on which way we pull our brush. Very cool. Now, why don't we come in just a little more horizontal with these guys over here, just like that. Remember, you don't have to make everything the same color. You can have a little darker ridge back in there and all dependent on how we're pulling our brush, we get to decide what goes on, right? So you could literally build your entire scene just like this, pulling and stretching, going back and forth. As long as we have a few little bright areas, a few little dark areas, maybe right in between, you get that little darkness, that little ridge, something's happening in there, right? 
some little shadowy some something or other is happening right in there. And the more you go over it, the more you're going to contaminate all the colors into the same. So just like that, get this wicked cool little thing. Now let's take a very small little fan brush and maybe we'll put some far off bits of trees or something. Maybe we'll have a little cabin out here in the snow. You could have all sorts of stuff happen out there. So what, co what three colors do we use guys in order to make up our shadow? That's what I want to know. Which three colors am I mixing up just straight onto my brush, going about the same amount into each of them and pulling them down right here. If you can tell me, I'll give you a follow right now. Let's see, what do we got? Black, crimson, and blue, Layla, or Lily. Let's see, can we pin that? I already, oh, where'd it go? There we go, pin that comment. Everybody go follow Lele. Lele. Oh, look at that pink shining in down here. Oh, it's gonna be wicked cool, guys. So we're gonna take our bit of our darkness, right, that we created with our blue, black, and crimson. Just those colors, just like that. Remember, you guys can buy this painting. It's available for sale on paintwithjosh.etsy.com. You can go over there and search for number 871. That's this painting out here, right? Now, let's say maybe way off in the distance up here, we're gonna make a little tree. Let's live right out there on the top, right? I'm gonna have a little bit of background color back there so it'll stand out. And if anything, we're gonna have this little chunky little tree way out there on the tip top of the edge. And then we'll put a little highlight on and brighten them up just a touch. Just a little bit, right? Maybe over here, he's got a little friend, sits down a little bit lower. Right down there, right? The further you bring it down, the closer it's gonna look, right? So as we come in and pop them in, pushing the brush, just like that, all against the canvas, right? The further you go down, the more little branches are gonna pop out, do little cool little bits, and then we'll go light all that thing up. It's gonna be really neat. So all depends on our directional pull of our brush, right? Which way our little shadow can go. Do we want the shadow to go this way, away from all the lights? Do we wanna pull it this way? away from the lights over there. Which way do you want to pull your shadow? Or do you want to kind of pull it in both ways, leaving it a little flatter, right? A little bit darker underneath, and then we can start to pull in our snow from around it and shape what we want our little hill to look like. You know what I mean? Go back, brighten it up, do whatever we want to do. So this guy, I mean, we'll pull down this way. And the more you stretch him down, the bigger shadow he's going to have, right? If we're going to stretch him down that way, let's stretch this guy down that way too. Just pulling it in, pulling it down. That's all you got to do. Very, very, very lightly, softly going over it so it doesn't restretch that shadow back and blend it all back in, right? Now, because they're at different heights and different lower levels, it's gonna have them look like they're further away, closer together. All depends on what you guys wanna do. Tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Let's go put a little bit of highlight on these guys out here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is get a little of my liquid white. We're gonna come into our blue, just like that. So just very lightly brightens up that blue, right? It's very wet and runny because it's got liquid white paint. So let's take, if our shadows are on this, this back side, we might as well be touching the right side with all of our shadows. So just very light little taps, a couple little bits. You don't need to have the whole tree be all lit up, right? And even though I just looked like I tapped it 19 times, I only tapped it once. I was going like this just so closely. And then when I finally actually made contact, we stopped, right? So same thing over here, very lightly tip taps don't have to do a whole lot just a couple little bits out there right they're further away they don't need a whole lot of detail way out there now we'll wipe off that same brush and we're going to come back dipping into our liquid white and let's come over here into our titanium white and just because we've got a little bit of brush on the blue because we didn't clean it we just wiped it off on the paper towel it's going to make this paint slightly off white which is going to look gorgeous it's going to look white back up against all this right and we'll get our little tree trunk on this side just like that little teeny tiny bit come in start tapping smallest little things back there just need little teeny tiny things back there seriously don't need a whole lot of pressure don't need a whole lot of paint don't need a whole lot of detail very far away a couple little bits all right come up to this guy same thing a couple little tappers back and forth boop, 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 boop. that's your little tree out there in the distance right very cool now you can brighten up your area surrounding that if you wanted to Take a bit of our bright paint, a little bit of our white over here. So we wanted to brighten up our snow around that bit of shadow just to accentuate it a bit more. You know what I mean? Or you can take this guy and make it look like it's deep, right? Like it's dug out in there just by making a little smiley face. That's all you gotta do. Make a little smiley face back in there, right? Very lightly go over his shadow so we don't mix it up. We don't pull it around. But now he's got, it's almost set on a little hill that's almost too high. There we go. Straighten that little smiley face out just a little bit back there. Very cool. Soft little shadow. Don't have to do much. This guy off here, 
don't want to put a whole lot of paint because you're going to have to drag it to blend it, right? And if it goes in front of this other guy, then we're going to be in trouble. Just like that, very lightly. The more you mess with it, the more it's going to blend in with the color underneath. Slightly darkening it. Look at that. Just like that, guys. How cool is that? What if we had a, a little road way back in the distance? Maybe it takes us back to our cabin. Who wants to put a cabin back there? That's my question. Do you guys want to put a cabin back there? See, we got that brightness, a little bit of darkness. Next little bit of bright creates that little lip back in there. Then we can fill it in. We can do all sorts of stuff with it. But very neat little round little action we got going on back here. A couple trees off in the distance. Why don't we put a few more just back there, right? We'll take a little bit of our dark color and come in like that. And back in here, I'm going to make these guys a little bit bigger. Right back there. And I know it's hard for you guys to see on this side. At least if I tap them in like that, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, make them a little bit easier for you guys to see, right? Just like that. Come back into our dark colors. Our three dark colors are crimson, black, and blue. Always give you guys a follow for knowing the crimson, black, and blue. And you got to have enough paint on here. You want them to be kind of chunky. Got to have them be kind of chunky. A little chunkiness out there. All right. And then this guy, maybe he's got a smaller little guy back here behind him. Just to fill in the rest of the canvas back there. You don't always have to go side to side. But when there's nothing back there, you kind of want to do something. Some sort of something back there. Right. So let's see. What if we wanted to make our little pathway first? What if we had like a little white little road we'll see what it looks like maybe put a little of that crimson color down into here make this kind of bright reddish pinkish color and we'll get some highlights off of our our little red color back there It'd be kind of neat so what if we did like a oh, who knows who knows what if it came from back here right that little bit back in there that little red color is all we're looking for really all right it's going to extend its way out i have this little action in here a little bit more a little bit more and then it'll get wider and wider and wider and wider and wider as it goes down. But that would be a very cool looking little roadway. Especially if we could make it look all crazy, right? So let's come back in here. We'll take a bit of our white paint. We'll start to slide this guy down. And we'll start to create our little path back in there. Very cool. All right, we can go over it. We can do whatever we want. Just very lightly, very slightly. It'll reveal some of that pink underneath. Very cool. Onto this side, brighten this guy up just a touch. All right, come out here. And then we're gonna decide where we want our little bit of roadway to start building. And then we can go back and add little differences and little things and stuff. All the little stuffs, right? You got too much paint on the canvas. It's really gonna be wanting to mix in. Get that hair out of there. Get that bone out of there. There we go. Very cool, like we got this far off little thing way back in the distance. Just like that, you guys push these trees out, right? Bring the bit of white back, dragging it back up the hill, right? It's just like a sequin pillow. You don't have to force it and just and pull it out in one direction. And go, okay, well that's it. That's all I've got, and that's where I'm stuck, right? Pulling off our shadows that way because we got that light behind it back there. Start dragging that white back towards the trees, right? Just back like that. Little smiley faces, be wider and wider and wider and wider and wider as it gets towards us. Just like that. Very cool. Very cool, guys. Okay, let's see. What if we put a little house out there in the distance? Just because I want to see one. I just want to see a little cabin. I don't know about you guys, but I want to see a little cabin. So we're going to come back in here, mix up that same dark color, our black, crimson, and blue, onto the knife. Just like that, right? And say we come out here. And let's just take a little bit. Why don't we come in, actually, we're gonna scrape out. Let's come over here. We're gonna just literally scrape away any paint that's on the canvas by pushing hard against it, scraping it away like that, right? Say we came back here with our roof, so we're gonna lose a lot of those trees, right? Don't need all the trees if you're gonna have a cabin in front. Don't need to have all the trees back there. Right, scrape off our bit of roof like that. Comes down to the side, down this way. A bit of front, bang. Now you can see just all the amount of paint that's on that canvas, especially when you're adding a lot of snow. You get a lot of white paint on there. It's no joke. You gotta scrape that stuff off. All right, now we can come in here very lightly and start to shape what we want our little building to look like. And then we'll go back and add that dark color over it. And then we'll go back to our highlights and stuff. So scrape up that darkness, right? Come in here, just sort of filling over the same area that we just covered up. 
We'll cover over a little bit like that. Turn the knife, mush it down so it's nice and dark, right? A little bit of darkness out there. And again, with all this white, it's gonna wanna mix in and turn a lighter color. Remember, you gotta keep it dark. Bring our bit back here. Just dumping it down, and take our bit of roof, and work that guy down this way. There we go. Now we got a cool little bit of a house way off there in the distance. Boop. And then you can adjust him, do whatever you want to do, right? And I'll show you how to make it work. Now, come in here. We don't need so much paint on there. So again, scrape up what we got. Leave a little bit of that darkness, especially on the roof. You're going to want it dark up on the roof. But down underneath, scrape up some of that paint. Shoot, we can even save it over here. We might make something out of it later, right? Now we're going to come in and we're going to mix up a little bit of our brown wood color, which I like to do a bit of our dark sienna, a bit of our yellow ochre, right? And if we need to, a little bit of our white just to brighten it up. So in a nighttime scene, you don't really need the super brightest wood you've ever seen. So we'll test what we made, a little bit of our brown. Come in here and just pull it down just like that. That actually might look pretty good, guys. Again. Fair amount of pressure, trying to mush it on so it doesn't break. It creates those long wood grain patterns, right? Now I'm gonna take a bit of my darker brown color, that Van Dyke brown, and mix that guy up, and a bit of my black, crimson, and blue color, right? That little purpley mixture. Mix those guys up into a darker color brown. Right? It's a very deeper, darker color brown, which we're gonna put back here in the shadows. All right, so same brown, maybe tuck a little bit of that dark shadowy bit right up underneath here. And remember guys, I've been forgetting to say this the whole time. This painting is available for sale. You can go over and buy it at paintwithjosh.etsy.com. We're going to take our knife and we're going to scrape out a little doorway right there. Scrape it out for our little guy to live in. Let's see. Just about two short lengths on the big knife anyway. All right? And who knows? Maybe there's a little window over here. Scrape him out a little window. Just take it right out of the stuff. Now, when we go back in here, this is when you decide, does someone live in your cabin right now or is it abandoned? Is no one there? Or does someone out there, does someone live out here? So let's take a little brush, sort of a clean dry brush, which we don't have many of. No, I've got like 17 brushes. So I'll take a clean dry brush and come over here very lightly, gonna start to pull it out. And remember we can slide back the color if we need to. Take it up to his door and now we're gonna work down at an angle. Like that, go up here, down to here, and then from here up to here at a different angle. All right, you get that little V shape, just like that. It's gonna help make your building look more 3D, right? Just the two little angles, just like that. It's gonna help you so much, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, right? You can even take your knife like this and come back through and scrape in little bits all the way down. A lot of pressure, cut through the whole thing. See how we cut through our little planks like that? Very cool. You can even take a bit of the darkness and run it down, right? We're, we're literally just scraping it up with the back of the knife, the soft edge, or the, the small edge anyway. Running it down through with a little bit of darkness just to try to fill up a couple of those little streaks. All we got to do. Bang. Just like that. A couple little imperfections, right? Now, with our knife and that dark paint, that super dark mix that we had, we're going to want to come in here, make our little doorway. Right? It can go down into your, into your snow because we can always adjust it, right? So come in there, got our little doorway like that. And then we'll take the small side of the knife and we'll fill in our little window. And this guy is not home. He's, he must be out hunting. He's out taking pictures of, of the auroras. He's doing something, right? Make sure it's deep and dark enough to make sure that it's uh, you know, very dark inside there. Very cool. Now, we're going to take the bottom of that guy, pulling it out in both directions so we don't overdo it in one direction, right? just like that. Now, I'm going to take a bit of my other brush, that cleaner brush, we're going to start to pull this white. Look, we're going to slide it back, come back, grab it all the way from the edge, slide it back to the cabin. See how we're taking all that shadowy color and making it go away, sliding it all the way back over there, right? Get rid of that whole thing, literally. You do whatever it is you want to do and I show you how to do it, right? You don't have to just go, oh crap, I pulled it out in this direction, now my shadows don't make any sense, blah, 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 right? Slide that sucker back. Slide it all the way back. 
The best part about these oil paints, they literally move all around. You don't have to do anything. So remember guys, go get this painting. It's number 871. You can get it at paintwithjosh.etsy.com. I might want to make like a little lake down here for the guy. Watch this, like how cool would this be? If this bit right here, if we start pulling it down, you know what I mean? This could be a little, a little lake right there, like a little pond, guys. Just, I mean, with a couple little swip swipes. Shoot, we could even reflect that down into the water. I'm just saying, JS over here, JS, just saying. We could do some cool stuff. Now, let's say, right, I wanted to have like a little pathway in this thing. So, maybe from back there, I'm just literally going to cut in a little bit of path as it starts getting closer and closer. Wider and wider. Maybe we take him off that direction. If there's going to be a, if there's going to be a little thing, maybe he's got a little roadway back behind his place. Yeah, that looks better. Okay. Now we're going to come in, take a little bit of black and a little bit of white. Right? Going to make a little gray color. Much less black than white. You don't need it to be super dark. Right? Doesn't need to be super dark. Take that color over there. Just mixing it up, pulling it in different directions, leaving little streaks and little things. It'll start to look like this area has actually been driven over, right? So again, we're gonna come back in, a little bit of that darkness, gonna darken it up just a bit more. And then maybe we'll make a couple little tire tracks back in there. Right? A couple little tire tracks, some sort of something. Maybe he'd turn every so often, start to drive up his little, his little hill up there. You never know, right? A couple little bits, and then we can go over them until they lessen, you know, until they start to fade down to whatever color we want. Of course, if we're gonna have a tire track there, we're gonna have one right there. Look at those little things. Look at the little details just from the little bits of difference in color, right? Those little things. Just from a little darkness. Take a little bit of that blue, just to help darken them up, right? He's got his quad resting off the side over here. A couple little bits. Look at how you do that, though. Little directional changes come into different tire tracks. We all know they're not all the same, right? They're never all going to be the same. Where did that super dark blue line come from? There we go. Maybe it goes up and over his little hill. Who knows? Who knows? Only you. You're going to be the only one who knows what your little thing does, right? And the further away they get, the less details we're going to have. So I'm just going to put a little bit more of the color out here and just blend it a little bit more. Dang, just like that. Very cool, guys. Very cool. I love this little thing right here, right? Now, we could take that whole little road. You could have it come down this way. You literally could. You could have the whole thing whip around, bring it over here. You could have water. You could do whatever you want to do. Literally whatever you want to do. I'm just here to show you cool little things, right, with a couple little swip swipes. It's like it never happened, right? So remember to go buy this one, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. And let's go highlight the roof. We're going to take a little of our titanium white, very thick white paint, and come back onto this side and just touch a little bit. Let it hang over the smallest little bit. Come up to the top a bit further than you think you need to anyway. Right? Jaggedy little things are going to start making icicles over there. Now we're going to come down this way until we reach our little edge. It right? doesn't have to be a perfect triangle. It doesn't all have to be the same. And if you're just so small, you can drape a little bit of stuff over there, right? Now, scrape up a bit more paint, and we're going to press it. What is that? Holy crap, is that a sale? What did we sell? You're kidding. You're just absolutely kidding. Who got this one? Who got this one? Now I got to go look. I'm sorry, guys. I got to go look at, the, at who got this one now. And then we're going to go fix the roof. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. What do we get? Let's see. Just very quickly. 871. That's this one right here. This one right here, so I'm assuming they're probably watching. And uh, if they can just tell, oh wow, that's the first time I've ever sold to that state. So if you could just tell me what state that, uh, that you are bought it from, if you're the buyer, and just tell me the state that you live in or just the state code, that would be uh, good enough for me. So that's it right there, Andrea. Andrea, Andrea, that's you right there, hang on. Bang, Andrea is gonna get a follow from Paint With Josh first. Let's decline that, we're gonna get a follow and then we're gonna go pin Andrea's comment. So everybody follow Andrea right there. She just bought this painting. So 
Andrea is going to get to choose whatever name we're going to name this, right? Maybe she has her own name already picked out, or maybe she's going to choose the name that you put in the comments. So start coming up with a name, right? Just very lightly dragging our little bit of roof over, matching the pitch, Bang, just like that soft little thing out there. Very cool. Very cool. It blends in with that darkness, kind of creating this little bit of, of grayish color, right? On the shadowy side of all of our lights back there. Our brighter white's going to be here. Our darker side's going to be there. So awesome, guys. Take a little bit of that white again. Maybe we'll put a little on the lip of our lip of our window right there. Perfect. All right. Maybe there's some resting on the top of the doorway. Boom. Very cool, guys. Very cool. All you got to do is sort of outline just very lightly the edges of the door. Not even have to be perfect on both sides. Just outline it. And then it's going to look very cool. You know what's neat? You can almost take a bit of uh, white onto your brush. And if you get a chunky bit of white onto your brush and slide it out of that little opening right there, right? very lightly, just so we can see that there's some snow going. It's built up built up and it's going inside the house now, right? So then we can take our one inch brush, one of these dry one inch brushes. This one's got a color on it, but it's okay. Just like that, start to pull our bit of white out until they all match the same, right? And it'll look like you get a bit of that draft that blew into the door. Guys got snowed in back there. Snowed in, all depends on the angle, the brightness of our snow, the thickness, right? What gets lit? Very cool, very cool. Snowed in little guy back there. I love our little tire tracks. Those things are neat. Wicked bit of paint right here. This one might take a day or two to dry. It's very thick, very thick little bit. Okay, so in order to maintain those tire tracks, we should probably put a bit of white in between them. All right, it doesn't need to be the whole bit of blue. I'm gonna have some sort of snowy bit in between those tire tracks, I would imagine. If it was my cabin out there anyway, right? Very lightly. We don't lose all those details, right? Very light, just with our pressure. But look at that. Just a little bit, a couple little things, right? Now, uh, Andrea, what uh, do you have a name for this painting already? Thank you for buying it. Don't give me that. Thank you. So do you want the road to kind of come around this way out towards us? Maybe we have a bit of like a little, uh, little frozen pond over there. I mean, it almost looks like a frozen icy pond the way it is right now. But... Winter Solace, that's a very cool name. We could bring that bit of uh, tire tracks around the edge of the pond. We could have some more land. We could do all sorts of stuff. The road less traveled, that's a cool thing. That's a cool thing right there. Very neat. That'd be cool, says Andrea. Okay, let's do this then. Why don't we take a bit of our white <clears throat> and we're gonna come in from the side, right? So say we got our frozen pond over here. But we need to make our bit of land on this side, right? So it's going to want to blend in. We're going to use a lot of paint right here. There we go. Wrap it around. We can decide where we want our little frozen pond to remain just by pulling to the side like that. It's going to get a little brighter as it comes towards us, right? So start with your brightness. Let it work away. Start with your bright area down here. Let it work away. Dang. Now, it depends on how far you pull over, right? How far are you pulling that bit of white? It's going to shrink your little pond every time. Now, let's come over here, a bit more white on the brush, and leave a... What are we going to leave, guys? What are we going to leave? What are we going to leave right over here? If I went like this, and I just started to pull down just the littlest bit, right? What am I leaving in between our two bits of bright color? What's that little piece called back there? Dark separator. Jasmine has been paying attention. First person I saw when I came back here anyway. I don't have time to look at all the comments, I'm sorry. But Jasmine, everybody will give her a follow because she knows that little dark separator, right? In between these two bits of bright color is a bit of darkness. We're gonna take this guy with a fair amount of pressure, just enough so I don't have it grow all the way down. We want it to be very dark back in here, just like it's very dark above our sky back there. All right, just like that. Don't want it to go all the way. Now this bit up top right here, Eventually, very lightly, just to get the top, not to get all the streaks. You want to keep the streaks in this case, right? Normally, when we do our sandy beach, I always tell you to get rid of those streaks and we swipe them side to side. 
In this instance, we want to keep the streaks, but we don't want to have the brush marks up here. So we swipe them down like that. Now, all we're going to do is very lightly start to bring our snow downward, down here to the edge of our little pond, right? So I'm going to start to shrink that dark separator, working on our angles. Maybe there's a little hill that went off that way. Who knows, right? But we're going to start to shrink it down, shrink it down, shrink it down until we just have that little bit of dark separator right in between, right? Bring these guys together. Bring this guy over here. However far you want to take this guy in the front, don't matter, right? And just make your pond look a little bit more round. The further we bring it around this way, the further our road can come around, right? So, but just like that, don't make it too crazy. You want it to be a reflection of there. And then we're just going to very lightly, just so lightly, couple swipes, just like that, to make it so where you can still sort of see the streaks, but they're sort of blurry, right? Definitely not as crisp as the one up top. Definitely not. Okay, <clears throat> let's see, let's see, let's see. If we want to bring our tire tracks out this way, how do we do that? What color did we go with? We went with this bit, I'm gonna bring it down. And then remember the tire tracks are gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger as they come towards us, wider anyway. Well, bigger and wider, both. So say this guy is off the side. See what I mean? Much wider over here than they are over there. Very small space, very big space over here, right? As far as I can get my fingers to go apart. Oh, I got a cramp. But that's how you're gonna keep your, your uh, perspective, especially if you're getting something that's very big up here, right? We're gonna take it, go up into the snow. You gotta get skinnier and skinnier and skinnier all the way back, a little bit thicker out here. Very cool, that looks awesome. I like that. Now, we're gonna come back with a little bit more of the color. Just our dark color or blue, crimson, black, right? Just a little bit. Just don't want it to be as super dark as possible. Make these guys a little thicker as they come over here. And then we'll add some white around it, right? Just like so, coming in there, coming in there. And that way we have our white in between. Our dark around the edges, look how deep it looks with all those little different things. It looks like it's sunk in and we're trying to Get up out of it, just with those little streaks of white that we've left. Different times, right? We don't just ride through one time. This guy's got to come back and around this pond all the time. He's getting a little, he's getting a little ballsy, if you ask me. He's getting a little close to this, this edge. You don't know if you're going to tip over or not. But that looks freaking awesome. Just with those little differences, those little streaks of white. Maybe if we put another one in right there, right? Blend this guy in. It's one more little dip that we've been in. One more time that we've been up and down the road. That's freaking cool. See how the things we just find, you just find stuff every so often. You're doing something and you go, ooh, that looked pretty neat, right? Like that's much too bright to be in that dark spot right there. So watch this. Go across it a couple more times. Darken it down. Darken it down, right? Looks like it's sunk in a little bit. This guy over here needs to be a bit darker to come to think of it. All right, he's looking a little, a little too bright for his britches. There we go. A little darker on the side. Look at that, just adds that little bit of depth, right? Of course, we can always maintain that we had one way back here leading up to his little place. Maybe they're, they're quad tracks, or snowmobile tracks or whatever. I mean, it's obviously not. the snowmobile track would be in the in the center. I know. I got it. I got it. Okay. I'm from Vegas. Okay. Give me a break. <laughs> give me a break. It's snow. What is, what, what is snow? I don't know. It's snow. This is what this is, right? That's snow. Because I don't know what snow is. We don't do snow here in Vegas. We get it brighter and brighter in between this guy. Right in here. So let's work from the bottom and then take it in between very lightly over the other tracks so we don't lose it. All right. Very cool. The more we work it in, the more it's going to be, the more it's going to dull itself down, right? Oh, look, we kind of went over our little track a little bit too much, which is okay. Come back in here. Darken it back up or get a little wider, bring it a little closer, add a little thicker out there a couple more times. All right, all depends what you want it to look like. All up to you. Very cool. Very cool. I mean, you could even take it, you could bring it way out here, but it's just a little, a little quad action that we're on today. Just a little quad that we're going on. Very cool though. I like that. That is a very, very, very neat one. Okay, we're going to bring in a little bit more of our white paint into here and sort of away from our tracks down towards our little bit. Very cool. We'll come back over that guy too. 
just by blending it in. Right? It's all you got to do. You don't have to mess around. You don't have to pull the paint off or, or stress about it too much. Right? Very lightly. A couple little bits down here. Wrapping it around. Very cool, guys. That's that's a freaking cool painting, if you ask me. I love these little tracks down here. Ah, oh, it's wicked. Wicked. We could put like one ginormous tree straight through this whole thing. Oh, uh, we should. We could. What does Andrea think? What do you think, Andrea? You think it's done? It looks pretty. Maybe throw some stars in there. Get, get a little twinkle. A little twinkle action out there. What do you think? What do you think? Let me know, Andrea. Andrea! Hey, guess who has a thousand followers? Kathy's Custom Art. Congratulations. I'm glad we could help you get there. I'm glad we could help you get there. Now, where's Andrea? Yes, stars for sure. Definitely. Gotta have some stars. Little snowman I saw. Little snowman. No snowman till we get closer to, to Christmas time. All right, let's get some stars in here. So in order to make some stars, we're gonna take our liquid white and grab up a little bit of our titanium white, get it out here on the edge. It's very thin on the brush. And then we're just gonna flick it off. A couple little bits, way out there. Don't want them to be too bright, right? You get too many and it looks too crazy. So, just like that, paint a whole galaxy full of stars in about three seconds. Just turned out fantastic. Just fantastic, if you ask me. So, did you get it with a frame is what I wonder. That's my question. I gotta look at the order now, I thought. Got the brown frame. That's gonna be cool, guys. That's gonna be cool, and it's brand new, too. I gotta open it out the pack. And then we'll put the family in, and we'll do all that, too. Let's see. Yes, stars, we got a billion stars in there. Needs a chimney off that guy, there's nobody inside. He doesn't need a chimney. There's nobody there. You just got a little stovepipe in there. Deer, that'd be cool, but I don't paint animals, unfortunately. If I tried to paint a deer into this scene, it would totally ruin the painting. It could be snowing. We could add some more bits. Like if we if we sprayed some more bits across the snow right here, it would look like that it was snowing. That's a very good point. All depends on where you put your spray, right? The fishing hole. Ah, oh, that's a cool title for it too. Just a cool title. If this isn't the hardest bit of plastic I've ever had to get out. You guys ever run into that where it's like, it's literally just thin, thin plastic. But uh, my goodness, it's the hardest thing I've ever had to do is open that thing. I feel so weak. I feel so weak. All right, let's pop this sucker out right here. Get this frame all ready to go. Yeah, that's gonna be, that's gonna be gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, with the brown in the in the um, cabin. Oh, guys, that's gonna be wicked. 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 Look at that. I agree. I'm thinking we're gonna add one more big tree, maybe down here somewhere, or some branches. We could put some stars on the pond for sure. Cabin fever. Ooh. The snowy past, I dig that one. I dig it, I dig it. All right, we can do some big branches that come in from the right. This is a 16 by 20 inch. 16 by 20 inch, and that's the frame. So we could do a big branch that comes in from the side, you know what I mean? Cutting through all these little bits of brightness through our, our Aurora Borealis. We could do a little sticky tree, like literally stuck right here at the base, so the guy's got to come around it. We can come up through these trees and just have this giant sticky tree right here with a bunch of branches coming off the side. It would be really cool. But it's up to Andrea. It's up to Andrea. Just a giant old sticky. So you want a tree by the pond, says Andrea. Is that correct? I'm going to pin that comment just so I can see. Tree by the pond. All right, you got it. You got it. We're talking like... Here, like I was saying, straight up through the, straight up through the thing, or you want it, you want it back here. We could put one back on this bit of ground right here in front of the, the um, cabin. I mean, you could put one anywhere and you have it stand up real tall, wherever you want. Totally up to you. Hey, welcome to the team. 444 members. Way back by the cabin. Okay, so back here by the cabin. I got you. We'll put a little sticky tree back there. 
little sticky old tree, right? So I'm gonna move my palette. Remember guys, I've got about 23, 24 more paintings just like this one. If you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, I've got tons of stuff over there. Now, again, I'm gonna make up my little, uh, my dark color, my favorite dark color that I love to use, right? And actually, this might be a good, actually, let's try it. Let's do this. Let's do this instead. Because I've always wanted to do this. This is gonna be cool. This stuff, right? I always tell you guys I never use the liquid black. And you can see this is the first time one's ever been opened. Dang. So the liquid black is a it's very runny like the liquid white. So you would think to use it as the base coat to the canvas. Never do that. It's like way too dark in order to be used like that. But it's good for making uh, very silhouette very close, dark trees and having them remain nice and dark versus mixing in with all this white too quickly, right? So let's get this stuff out and we're gonna pop in an old tree branch right over there. Right over by the cabin. All right, so well, that didn't work. I tried poking it with my knife and I didn't get enough, I guess. Didn't get enough. Come on. How hard can it be? Seriously. Ugh. It's like the hardest thing I've ever had to open. All right, I'm not messing around anymore. We are gonna get in this thing. Aha, there we go, okay. Took me a minute, but we finally we finally accessed, there we go. Now this stuff is, like I said, very wet, very runny black paint. That's why I never, ever, ever use it on the base coat, right? Cause it's too, it's too dull. It dulls out. Like if it, if instead of using clear, if you use the black, oh, like none of these would be very bright at all. It would instantly dull everything down. But for using them as a, uh, a silhouetted tree branch. Now that is another story. So let's clean that off. Let's change gloves now, just so we don't get this black crap everywhere. All right, get the new ones out. Okay, so you can never put them on too, like right away, because your hands are wet, you know what I mean? All right, let's see what we got. Let's see what we're looking at. All right, so we're talking about we're talking about right back here. I'm going to put a little tree right right back there. If it was me, right? If we were going to put a tree in and it was me, I would put it right here. Like literally from where my elbow is to where the tip of my hand is. Like that big, right there, right up in front. Lots of branches. So we'd literally have to like duck underneath it as we were riding our quad. Like... That's where the tree's got to go. No, they're like, no. Wanda G's like, yes, right? No, oh, do it. I gotta see what Andrea wants. We gotta see. Carrie's like, no. On the right side of the pond. I know right there, right, right here. Andrea said yes. I don't see it. Where, where did she say yes? It's we're not going to cover up half the painting. It's going to be a, 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 a leafless, branchy tree. Let's see. I am the artist, but this painting has already been purchased. So it's kind of up to the buyer whether or not she wants a big old branchy tree in there or not. It is. It's gorgeous the way it sits right now. I, I agree. I agree. You're a happy artist. That's funny. Let's see. Ooh, stars on the pond. You're right. I almost forgot about that. Hey, another subscription gift. Let's see. Uh, bup, 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 bup. I'd do it. I know, JB. Cosmic cabin. That's kind of cool. Put some tracks in the snow. There are literally tracks in the snow. You mean footprints? Hmm. All right. Well, I'm getting back away from the camera. So, Andrea... 
by the pond on the left, on the other side of the water, right over there. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, let's do this with a bit of that. And let's rock and roll just like this. So left side of the pond, gonna come over here and we're gonna make a little sticky tree right through. Pushing harder and harder and harder as we go down. Oh man. Oh, that liquid black just worked so fantastically, exactly like I thought it was going to. And that's awesome. That is what you want right there. That is what you want. Now we're gonna hide its little base, right? We can decide which way his little shape goes. And depending on how far we keep blending this thing up, right? Depends on how short or how tall the tree is. All depends, I imagine, a little sticky tree like that, right over here, <laughs> right in the front. Now my hands are all dry, I gotta cover these suckers back up. So, we'll give it a few little branches way out there. It's already nice. I know, I know. But sometimes you just gotta trust me. You just gotta trust. A little frozen boulder on the right side of the shore, I like that idea too. Let's see, let's see. I'm liking this one too. Okay, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna grab up a little liner brush, go into that liquid black paint, and just on the tip of the liner brush, gonna come out here and make it a little bit taller, firstly. Just like that, and come back in, and start adding our little branches. Now, if you want the branches to stand out, you kind of have to put them out into the colorful areas, right? So if you're just going a black branch against dark sky, you may not see it all, right? So if you want those black branches to stand out, make sure you're going across a dark area and make sure you've got enough of either the liquid black or if you're using the uh, odorless mineral spirits that you have enough of it on your brush to cover over like the white that we're going across right now, right? So little bits, little branches, right? Put them in front of those light colored areas and it'll help it stand out. Now, take this little guy down here and maybe he's got a little branch pokes out right there that sticks me in my shoulder every time I walk past. And maybe a little guy off to the side over here. Cool little tree over there. Now, in order to make him stand out, we're gonna to have to highlight him just a touch with our titanium white and come across and just start to touch it, right? Actually, we're gonna need some liquid white with that because we thinned it down with that liquid black. So liquid white, just gonna to start to touch. Even little teeny tiny things as we go up, right? And you'll have this, this little barky tree. But remember, you gotta leave one side very dark Gotta remain dark, otherwise it doesn't look 3D, it'll look flat. There we go. Very cool, you don't even have to go all the way to the top, you really don't. But you can. You can, but you don't have to. Right? If this was a, if this was Christmas time, I'd, hang, I'd be hanging little Christmas balls off all these little branches. So if you guys like Christmas paintings and little Christmas balls, I love putting little ball balls off of the, off of the branches around Christmas time. It's a lot of fun to me. Now I'm going to take my liquid white on the brush, come out here and just go over the tip top of some of the branches. Just hold them out there just a little bit. How much snow do you think it would hold out on the edge of your branch out there? All right, and in this area where you're going over the white, be very careful that the white doesn't touch the white. You got to have that bit of dark separation in there. All right, so even though we're right on top of the white, you got to make sure that other white is not touching the white. It's got dark on either side, and that way it stands out as being in front of the cabin back there. Very cool. One more little dip into my liquid white, and perhaps, who knows? Let's see, we get a little bit of, a little bit of our branchy guy out there, and this guy was holding a little bit of snow back in here. Doesn't all have to be the same, right? Not everything's got to be high lit. I have one more branch up here too, I think. You guys, right? It's the winter time. They're not full of uh, foliage or anything. 
So, like we said, we were going to put some stars in there, right into our water. So let's do that, right? We're going to reflect some of these stars right down into here. Boom, just a couple, just a little teensy little bit, just like so. Now I'm going to wash that brush out. We got tons of brushes to wash out. So as we're washing out these brushes, you guys got to start coming up with a name and then Andrea is going to pick one of those names. Maybe she's got a name picked out already that she wants to have or she wants to use. Maybe she had it picked out before she even bought the painting. You never know. But your comment might just swayed her to the other side, the dark side of the force. And she might choose your title over her own. So start coming up with a name for the titles. We'll put the family in there. Don't worry. Anybody who's freaking out that the family's not in there. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. I just have like literally no space to even put down another brush. So I have to clean some brushes first. I gotta get some, get some room over here. Clean some brushes. All right, let's see, let's see. That guy, I've only got like three more to clean. No worries. Into the thinner, into the trash can, shake it off. Like Taylor Swift and then into the bucket. And then we always beat off on a paper towel, always. Or tissue, whatever's more comfortable for you. I use the Viva paper towels, they're very soft. Oh, did I beat, beat the brush on a paper towel? Beat the brush, guys. That could be taken the wrong way. We could beat the brush on a paper towel. God, I almost just fell over. Lover's cabin, I like that. Quiet night. Let's see, let's see. All excellent little titles. All very well chosen. All depends on Andrea, what she wants to title this thing. I got two brushes left. Two brushes to go, guys. Two brushes. Two, two, two brushes. Bing, bang, boom. Maybe I might come back one more time tonight. Shoot. I mean, how many people we got watching? Maybe I might just literally start a new painting right now. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. That's very cool. Andrea's cabin. I like that. Well, I like that. Let's see, we're gonna come out here, just cause it looks a little funky. I'm gonna add one more little bit. One more little branchy branch, right up top. Just reaching out up there, right? And then we gotta go back over it, very lightly, with the teeniest little bit of our white. It's probably too much white on my brush. Teeniest little bit. Remember leaving half the darkness with half of the white, right? You can't cover all the, the dark, otherwise there's, it's, there's no depth to it. Even a tiny little branch needs a little tiny little bit of darkness to it. All right, now we'll come back to that liquid white, getting a small, small little amount on the brush. Coming back up here. Oh, I thought I had saved a little piece, but I guess I got it on my glove. Now, if we're gonna reflect the birds, They'd have to be up into the sky and then down into here. So let's do that, right? We're gonna go like this, pop them in like that, like that, and like that, right? Now, easy enough if you wanted to do them upside down, but I've not practiced them upside down. So I've done them about, oh, I don't know, 871 times right side up. So why don't we do this and we'll cheat a little bit, right? And that way, at least we can line them up correctly. And then boom, now we're in the upside down. <laughs> Bailey, come look, I painted the upside down. The Stranger Things is going to come out in like 10 years or whenever it's supposed to come back. I don't even remember. Okay, now we got to start with Bailey's little self first. So He's going to come down like that. And then it would be London, who's a little bit taller. Be that way. Yeah, this way. A little bit higher up. All right. And then big old paint with Josh. I got to get a little bit more, a little bit more paint on my brush. 
But now they should be lined up just about right. Just like that, right? Boom, boom, boom. Just get them in reverse. So now we can take this, flip it back up, come back up here. Yeah, that's not too dang bad if you ask me. Not too bad. It's like a little skipping rock. Boom, boom. Toss them up there. I like that. I like it. And it's especially, right, if we're going to reflect that, we're going to have to reflect the tree as well. You can't just mess around and just do one little thing. Now we got to reflect the tree down into the water, which is going to go like this. Right? You don't have to do a lot for uh, these sticky tree reflections. Especially if we're just going to come back, put a little of our titanium white, come back onto the same side that our little highlights are on. It's like a mirror-like reflection, if you ask me, guys. Man! Put a little of our waterline in between both of these guys to help kind of clean it up a bit. All right, we'll go back and fix this little side over here. Just like this. Very cool, guys. You can put a bush in right here. We can do all sorts of stuff, but fantastic. I love that little tree right there. And if we're going to have that, this guy would come off this way. Probably should put some paint on the brush if we're going to do it, Josh. There we go. So this guy is going to come off like that. We have the one little guy going like this. And the one guy like Perfect. Add a little bit of there, touch up on our white, and we'll be good to go, guys. So, I don't want to have too much white out on the brush when we go to do these guys. Be like I painted the upside down. She's like, I don't care, Dad. I don't give a crap. I don't care. I care what you done did, Dad. There we go. Scrape that bit away. Shoot, we can even use it for more bark. Very cool, guys. I like it. I like it. Put that guy way up there, right? Very neat. Very neat. Now, let's come over here and clean off the rest of these brushes. Now, we'll choose a title, spin it around, we'll name it, call it done, guys. That is a pretty one. I love the crystal clear reflection of the water. Like I was going to swipe over at it, but I just, I love how literally crystal clear it is. Very cool. Very cool, you guys. Lover's Cabin, I like that. I like that. Oh, thank you. One of the nicer ones I've done. Thank you. I appreciate that. So... Every so often we go a little, you know, a little classical, a little, a little less crazy. I get comment, like the, the number one comment that I deal with all the time, literally, the, you're not Bob Ross. How dare you stand where he stood? You'll never be Bob Ross. Um, those noises that you make are Bob Ross's, this, that, and the other. Got it. So I try to do different paintings and stuff, right? <laughs> And then the only, the only reels that go viral are the ones where I'm doing classic paintings. Those ones go viral. And I'm like, it's not my fault. Come look at the rest of my content. I have so much stuff that's not quote unquote Bob Ross, right? I have so much that's not him. And then it's the only the ones that are like, you know, classic mountain, classic colors, classic uh, composition. Those ones go viral. And then they go, stop copying Bob. And I'm like, I'm not copying Bob. Damn you all. Why do I even put out free content for you to watch? Just to get crapped on. That's what it is. Just crap on my on my videos, on my <laughs> on my career, on my talent. Just crap on everything. That's why you gotta love the internet. Gotta love the internet. Okay, what are we gonna do for a title on this one? Andrea, hit me with a title, pin it in the comments so I can look at it in 10 seconds and see what it is, and then we'll go title the painting. Very cool, and we'll add our little initials down around the bottom, sign the back, be all set. Get rid of that. Over there, over here. Wipe off the old palette, nice and clean. 
well, clean-ish. I don't know if this thing would ever come clean if I tried to get it clean, clean, but. Oh, just like that. Okay, what are we looking at for a name? What are we looking at? What are we looking at? Bliss in the Night. Now, we're gonna, are we giving anybody a uh, shout out for that name or is that just, did you come up with that on your own? Bliss in the Night. I dig it. I dig it. All right, let's see. Paint with Josh original painting. Number 871, holy cow. So, Bliss in the Night. Painted on 720 of 23, and we're all gonna go check out paintwithjosh.com if you wanna find my store, if you wanna find me on YouTube, if you wanna find my Facebook or my Instagram, my Amazon wish list my affiliate store where you can get your own supplies and paint like John all over there on paintwithjosh.com. Bunch of links, the whole supplies list for everything you need is on paintwithjosh.com. My YouTube channel, my Facebook, over 452,000 followers over on Facebook. 452,000. Wow. That's a lot of people. I'm about to break 500,000 on Facebook alone, alone. That's insane. That literally insane. Like literally, literally crazy. So excellent title, awesome little painting. Let's see, let's flip this around. Oh, we got it from Inspiration. That's perfectly fine, perfectly fine. Let's go like this. Woo, spin us around over here. Tilt it down just a touch. It's like so bright. Oh, there we go. Nobody wants to see me anyway. So come up here. Excellent. Awesome little painting. It's going to literally look like you can just walk right out into it when it's hanging on your wall. Fantastic. Turned out great. And uh, I love you guys. It's one of your favorites. That's one of my favorites. So um, yeah. And I might do a couple more like this, but add much more foreground to it. So it's you almost got to like peek through stuff to be able to see back there. So maybe I might just do another one tonight. If someone else is interested in buying one, it's, uh, it's 1120, but this is my real job. So what are we going to do? Right? Thank you. I appreciate that. And, um, I love you guys. Thank you, Andrea, for your purchase. Uh, it literally goes towards buying new supplies, paying my bills, paying the Wi-Fi, paying the lights. So you guys can see, are you serious? What? Wow, how, how is it? I look like, I look like Bill, uh, like uh, William Wallace, the blue all down my face. Just I mean, like my war paint. What the? All right, well, all right, guys. Um, be sure to uh, check out my new, yeah, who hit me, right? My own. How long has it been up there? Like, that's very close to my eye. Very close. It's like too close for comfort, right? Like, that's a lot of paint too. That's not just a oh. <laughs> nice, uh, you really feel how soft the paper towels are when you have to rub your iris. <laughs> Is it gone? Looks like it's gone. Is it up here? It's still up there. I'm sorry. I uh, I don't have a vanity mirror or anything, so this is what I have to do to, uh... Bailey. No, I thought she came out. Gone now? Looks like it's gone. Hey guys, what's happening? I can't see anything, but it's okay. All right, so uh, I love you guys. I'm gonna get out of here and um, maybe we'll just save the painting for tomorrow and come in during the day come into the studio during the day. You said you got the brown frame, right? Let's see what this guy's gonna look like in a brown frame. Ooh! Look at this beauty. That is a pretty one, you guys. Hang on, there we go. Get it in there. And you know we gotta wipe down before we do the 
do the set and the viewage. Gotta wipe it down. It gets all kind of paint on your easel you don't even realize. So wipe that whole sucker off, throw those away, put it back up here. That's cool. That is a pretty painting, guys. That frame really brings out like the brown, brings out that deep, dark mauve color back there. Very neat. Very neat. So, ah, it's awesome. I keep looking at it like, oh, there's a scratch on it. I'm like, oh, it's meant to be like that. <laughs> They're all over the place. Things brand new out the pack. You saw me take it out the plastic. So, don't forget the JK. You're right. I would have, I would have done that. Uh, I've done one too many paintings tonight, I guess, because I would have. I love this reflection so much over here that we're going to keep it down here. Just very small. Just kidding. Boop. Just like that. Very cool, guys. Okay. Let's see now. Let's see now over here. So thank you to Andrea for purchasing this painting. I'm going to go stick it in the garage and it will probably be dry within two days. Not even kidding. I, uh, I just literally have a client named Tim who purchases all the time. He um, purchased one that I had just done on Tuesday and I mailed it to him today. I wrapped it up in bubble wrap, stuck it in the box and sent it out to him today because it was dry. It's so dry here in Las Vegas that it literally sucks the moisture out of the paint. And, uh, Helps everything dry so much faster. So, a couple days, I'll get your uh, painting in the mail. And uh, until I see you guys again next time, I might just go relax. Um, I do have some awesome paintings planned for this weekend. So stick around if you want to get some cool art. Uh, or if you want to just watch some cool art be made, stick around with me, right? So, until I see you guys again next time, uh, I love you all. And um, it's way too hot in Las Vegas. Don't come here. Don't come here, it's too hot. So, I did get stars on the water. There's tons of stars in the water up here. Gorgeous stars. Gorgeous, what's up, Valentina? How's it going? Hi! Let's see, you wanna see the other frames? What do we got? What do we got? Oh, you know what? This one actually might look better. But where's, yeah, this one actually might look better. Check this out. If we go with the blue wood, ooh, guys, the blue wood frame, look at that. Oh, trying to hide all the brown. <laughs> Can't hide it all. But the blue wood, right? I mean, this was normally, I think it was like $10 more in the store versus the one that you bought, but I'll hook you up. I'll hook you up for free. For the $10, what's $10 between friends, right? So let's see what it looks like in this dark blue. The uh, bluish, goldish frame, which looks amazing. Watch this. Watch this. Guys, look at that. Ba Boom! This one's a little bit bigger of a frame. There we go. Bam! Right? It's like, it's hard to see with the camera, right? It's not gray. It's like a bluish wood, very dark blue wood, but in these bright lights, you know what I mean? It's super. Everything in it, the painting looks brighter than it is because I look brighter than I am, right? I'm normally not this bright. <laughs> if you really want to see bright, I'll show you that. It's like blind you because my farmer tan is so bad. Look at this tan. Look at this tan. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. So you like the blue one better? Me too. I really like the blue one. So, yep, we'll get it in the blue frame. I've got the clips right here and uh, my screw gun's downstairs. So. Uh, once we, once I hang up on you guys, I'll go downstairs and screw it all in. Get the three eighths inch for this guy. We might actually get away with the quarter inch ones on this guy, or the eight inch ones. I've got three different size clips that we use. So turned out fantastic. I really want to uh, to thank Andrea, and we've got so many more paintings for sales. Uh, so many more paintings for sale, guys. Uh, also, all the merch is fifteen percent off. My classes are 15% off. Uh, the workshop for the Waves class at the gallery, that's 15% off right now. All the posters, all the prints, um, the Paint With Josh puzzle, mouse pads, all the home office stuff, all the mugs, everything, 15% off. And then the canvases are 40% off. Uh, free shipping over 35 bucks, so you gotta spend 35 or more to get the free shipping. But uh, 
First time watching, you thank and you you purchased on the very first time. <sighs> thank you, I appreciate that. And it wasn't even done yet. Had you not what? So you'd never seen me before. You bought it when it was this done. There was nothing else below that section. The cabin wasn't even in. It was just those trees when you purchased it, right? And you'd never seen me before. That's 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 faith right there. I appreciate that. I accidentally drank the paint water. No, yeah, I I don't. I, my <laughs> My paint thinner cup would kill me if I drank that. Mm. I don't use water for sure. Mm. And I try to keep it away so I don't drip anything into my cup, right? As we go across it. That's how hot it is in Las Vegas. It's like 73 degrees in here and still sweaty drinks. So definitely faith, right? Now, I know a lot of the normal buyers, they go, okay, they've seen my paintings before. They know what it's going to turn out like, and um, they trust me to, to do a good job. And so for someone to come in and never seen it, did you go look at my store? Did you look at any of the reference photos? Did you look at my Instagram? Did you go anywhere else? Or did you just, you're like, screw, I need this before anyone else. Like these are my colors and everything. I know this frame is much better. I agree. That's why this one was a little bit more expensive, but we're hooking Andrea for free. She's a first time watcher, first time buyer. And uh, it was like ten dollars more. It's no big deal, no big deal. So, love the ref. I know it's like, it's like crystal. Like literally, I just want to throw a rock into it just to make some ripples. It's so clear. <laughs> it's so clear. I don't know why these lights are so damn bright. Everything in this freaking room is so. Oh, that's not too bad. Ah, I can see you guys now. Hello, hi everyone. <laughs> so looked at Etsy. And uh, yeah, so I, I feel you, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. All right, what's up with this light? It's either too bright or not bright enough. I need to get like a diffuser. Uh. <laughs> so I really appreciate you guys uh, for watching and hanging out with me and being here for so late, it's almost 1130. I don't know where you guys are, um, but I appreciate you guys for being here with us. First time we ever did like snow tracks uh, from either a four wheeler or a truck or whatever. Uh, it turned out really fantastic. I love the reflection of the lake. I love the aurora in the sky. The night sky is amazing. The tree um, highlights and the shadows came out fantastic. Their, their actual shadows are amazing. I love those. The freaking reflection is just like, just crystal, just crystal clear. You know what we do? We actually do just a couple more um, little bits because whoever was saying that was correct. If you look at the, there's stars inside the reflection here, but not inside the reflection here. They're only above it. So I'm going to come back in, smallest little bit, a couple little reflecties in there. Now we got some stars in there we can see. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. You start throwing paint at the canvas. Every time I have this in my hand, it just makes me want to do more. So I got to set it down. Okay. Let's get that all cleaned off. Wiped off. Dried off. Oh, you know what? We could like, just a little, a little dusting. Look like snow or like, like the frozen frosty, like, you know, that, what do they call it? They literally call it when like the air freezes, like the the, the, the the little particles of water in the air freeze. Oh, that'd be cool. Could you add some snow? What do you mean? There's like, snow. I don't know there's like falling snow because that's what the glitter would sort of do. It's just kind of, it would give all the effect of these little flakes as they were coming down. Right? Like a little dusting. Right. Yeah. A little dusting. Okay. That's what we're going to do with it. And then that's the last thing we're going to do. So I'll pop in a little of our ocean blue glitter, right? Which is going to look like little teeny bits of little snowflakes. Look, you don't even need a whole lot, right? I'm trying to show you guys. Don't need a whole lot. And then try not to breathe in when you get too close to these things. I've done it before. And you're like, <coughs> it's horrible. So I'm going to come over here. And, oh, wow, look at those things just sparkle back there. All right, I'm gonna put a few few more into the snow though. Couple in here. 
gorgeous. Perfect. Fantastic. Now, any which way that you go across it, when you're walking down your hallway, you're going to pick up little snowflakes, little sparkles, little bits. I don't know. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cancel your order, actually. I'm keeping this one. You can't have it. It's so pretty. I'm going to keep it. I'm just messing with it. So, all right, guys. Well, I love you. And, um, you know, we will see you on the next one. Uh, beyond that, I'll probably get on uh, earlier than normal in the morning. Um, well, shit, I knew, normally never go live on a Friday morning. So, uh, about maybe noonish. I got to go buy new dog beds because the dogs shredded their beds. I think they start to fight over the beds. And then they're like, well, if, you know, if I can't have the bed, no one's going to have the bed. And then they rip the bed up. So, I'm going to go buy them new beds. It can be like 70 more dollars. And, uh, and then we'll come back. But I'll do like an afternoon show tomorrow. Do another one now. It's like, it's almost midnight now. I've already done two tonight. Oh, I wanted to show you guys too. We've got so many awesome ones for sale in the Etsy shop. Look at this guy right here. Little UFO off in the distance, right? Is it a cloud? Is it a UFO? Way back there. Awesome little crashing water. The, the wave is just, it's, it's one of the best ones I've ever done. This little blue one. And I've reduced the prices on all the original paintings, all the frames, Everything has been reduced in the store and it's 15% off on all the hats, the shirts, the posters, the canvas prints and everything. So let's see, do I add something after it dries? I have done in the past and it's ruined paintings for me in the past. So very careful about what you choose to do, whether you do a brush on one, um, a spray on, don't hang it to dry because that stuff will drip down and then you'll have this gorgeous painting with a bunch of clear teardrops coming down and it's horrible. <laughs> if you use the spray and you get too close, it's just like, uh, like using a spray paint can where it'll drip and then run down. Um, I tend not to seal them. Um, it really just depends it goes case by case really. Um, but yeah, I would never, never hang it to dry. And I have videos on how to varnish it on my YouTube. If you go to my YouTube page, there's a, a playlist called the how to playlist, right? How to put the liquid clear, how to do the undercolors, how to make a white canvas into a black canvas, how to, um, to put the, the clear coat on at the end, right? Uh, all that stuff over in the how to section in my YouTube play, uh, my YouTube channel. So head over there, check it out. Uh, beyond that, I love you guys. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Andrea, for making your purchase. Uh, thank you to Greg for purchasing earlier tonight. And uh, my weekend is starting off fantastically already, thanks to you guys. So um, I love you all. Go get your shirts, 15% off, 15% off on the hats, free shipping over 35 bucks. So if you get a sh I, one of these shirts, it will get you free shipping right away. Uh, but like a hat and a poster, bam, you got free shipping. You know what I mean? You don't have to spend $100, two, three, four hundred dollars $400 in my store. You can literally go buy a $13 poster and it's still going to help me out just as much as somebody who buys a $200 painting or $300 painting, or $400 painting. It all goes towards buying more supplies, paying the bills, feeding my daughter. I haven't even eaten dinner yet tonight. It's 11, th I'm probably just, I probably should just probably skip dinner tonight. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit too late to eat now, right? It's like 11.30. Yeah, probably just skip dinner tonight. That's starving artist. That's it. That's how you get to, that's when I look at myself and I go, Josh, you put on a couple pounds. No dinner for you tonight, buddy. <laughs> No, I just ran out of time. But, uh, Subway! <laughs> no, that'd be so bad for me, even though it was like exactly what I want. We went and spent like $200, $300 at the store. I'm in Las Vegas, by the way. I'm from Utah, but I live in Las Vegas for the past 33 years. Um, are you writing a book? <laughs> uh, but we went to the grocery store yesterday, spent like 277 bucks. Then you go to the grocery store and you're like, all right, I'm gonna have chicken cordon bleu, mashed potatoes, and some corn one night. And then we're gonna do. Uh, I think I got like some little, like a pre-made um, uh, chicken Alfredo thing that I had last night. It was amazing. Uh, we got some noodles. We got some little cheese tortellini things. You buy all this crap. And then the next night comes around. And you're like, oh, man, McDonald's sounds so good right now. Oh, if I could just have Subway right now. You know what I mean? Like, ah, uh, I just spent all that freaking money. And now I don't even want to eat the food that's in my house. Am I the only one that does that? Like I literally go shopping and then I want to eat 
anything else besides what I bought. So uh, because of the time, it's 2.40 where you are. It's uh, That means it's 11.40 where I am. You must be central time. Eastern time. I don't even know. Eastern time. <laughs> it must be Eastern time. So uh, like I said, we got tons of people over there looking like they're yeah, favoring canvas prints and poster prints and all sorts of prints. There's another one right there. So like I said, I do have uh, 23 or 24 uh, original canvas paintings. A lot of them are gorgeous. Some of them are very big. Some of them are very small, right? Look at that. Ah, burn my beard. <laughs> but they all come with certificates of authenticity that look very similar to this one. This one's number 848. And this one never got a name, guys. It never got named. Look, it only got numbered. So this is, must have been the first one that we said we'll let the buyer name it. So on some of these paintings, guys, you get to choose the name when you buy it. So very cool thing that it, uh, no one else is doing besides Paint with Josh. No one else lets you title their artwork. No one else lets you, you know, do everything else that I do. No one else is me, right? So I'm going to show you one more too. Actually, this one, guys, this one is gorgeous, right? Did this myself. Thank you very much. <laughs> right? We're going to come over here. Look at that. Woo, Nelly, look at that gold with the orange and the brown and the darkness and the white with the white matting. Tell me that's not amazing right there, right? Tell me that's not sweet. Now, this one, you can just get the canvas on its own, in which case I'll have to undo everything that I've done. <laughs> or you can get it with a gold frame. I think this one is the only painting that should ever go in this gold frame. None of my other paintings will ever go in this frame. If this never sells, I will keep this painting in this frame. It's made for this frame. It's meant for this frame. And I just, I love it. I love it. I love this one so much. Thank you, Samantha. I appreciate you. This one is just gorgeous, isn't it? And like I said, we did this one, what? On the 16th, so four days ago. I guarantee it's dry after four days. Anywhere on this sucker. So literally ready to ship to you and uh, hang on your wall. You even got a little cord with it too. So tons of stuff, guys, over in the Etsy store. Lots of original paintings, lots of canvas prints and poster prints and all sorts of stuff. And a lot of seascapes, apparently. I love painting the ocean. You can't get me to not paint the ocean. I love it more than anything else. Like this, there's another little, another little ocean scene. It's got very like reddish, brownish sand over here. Lots of detail in the rock. So out here in Las Vegas, they take about two to three days to dry right now during the summertime. During the wintertime, they take about 10 days to dry. So if you live in Florida, they might take six weeks to dry because it's so humid out there. Look at this one. Ooh, this is one of my faves. This is the brand new tutorial that just came out last Wednesday that shows you literally every step from me taking it out of the packaging, put it up on the easel, I show you how to put the piece of tape on, then we take it over to the table, we make it black on the bottom, then I put it back up here, I show you how to put the clear on, I show you how to put the white on, we do the sky, then we do the under, we do everything, every single step. You can paint this exact same thing, every single step, 100%. Guys, every step. How do you protect your paints with author's rights? What do you mean author's rights? Like my, I retain the rights to my own paintings. It's like that in any contract that I will ever sign or any deal that I will ever do, I retain the rights to my own artwork. Um, you know, I'm in, I'm in talks. There's, there's big things going on guys that I don't want to, uh, I don't want to jinx and I don't want to talk about before they happen, but big things happening. But uh, once again, I will always retain my own artwork. So, say uh, Andrea bought this painting, right? That doesn't mean that Andrea can go recreate um, prints of this painting and sell them because she bought the painting. Hell, what was that, another sale? Like, it's my painting, right? I retain the rights. I can sell prints. I can sell posters because I created it, right? It's in every part of my, uh, my Etsy store. Uh, on any contract that I'll ever do will be just like that. So, don't sell out your uh, your rights to anything. Let me tell you that. What we got here? Oh, snap. Look at that. Got a cold winter poster print. 
Excellent. Excellent. See, thank you. I appreciate you guys so much. So much. I love everyone, right? And then tomorrow, YouTube's going to pay. 21st is a good day. That's when all the, if you're, a, if you're an influencer, on the 21st is normally when you get all your payouts from all the, the apps will pay you out on the 21st for whatever reason, between the 21st and the, uh, and the 25th usually. But YouTube's usually good about being right on the 21st and it's going to be on a Friday, so it's kind of iffy. But I would have made more this month in, on my YouTube page because we went viral on YouTube. And uh, we're up to like 60,000 60, subs, something like that. Small potatoes, I know. Small, 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 small potatoes compared to my TikTok, which is at 350, or my Facebook, which is at 450. Good God. My Instagram, which is almost 300,000. YouTube, small potatoes, right? 60,000. But it's growing slowly. And, um, you know, it'll eventually get there. But uh, yeah, it's, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make more. I'm going to make more than double what I've ever made on YouTube in my best month ever this month. It'll be fantastic. So I can't wait for them to pay. And uh, it's 844 on Friday where you are. Well, you must be in like France or England or something. Let's see. I've got a lesson this week. Someone tried to get me to sell mine. Oh, please don't. No, the NFT is total garbage. Uh, it's all a scam. Every single per every single time they hit you with the same the same exact minute. Hey, mate, sorry, I came across, or sorry, you know, for the random approach and nothing is spelled correctly. I came across your, uh, your, your artworks with an S. Uh, you have beautiful artworks and, you know, I would like to pay you $7,000 as an NFT. Would you mind selling to me? And you go, $7,000? <sighs> sure. What do I do? Where do I sign up? Right. And yeah, no, don't. And so they go, uh, they go, oh, well, I use this site called blah, blah, blah. You should sign up through there. It only costs you a little bit. Of course, you know, you have to, there's some fees in, involved with the sign up process. But once you get signed up, then I can buy your artwork for $30,000. And you go, okay, that sounds good. I'm going to go sign up right now. You I, to type in your, your uh, payment information. Now they've got you. They've totally got you, right? Boom. Snagged everything you ever have in that account. They could take everything. Do not trust these stupid scammers. Even if they're legit, I still, every person that ever messages me and says, I'd like to buy your uh, NFT, uh, your art as an NFT. I literally tell them to off, like off. They never write back. You know what I mean? They'll go, that's unprofessional, sir. None of that, because they're all fake scammers. They are all scammers. All of them. All of them. So don't ask me to buy my work as an NFT. Buy it as a painting. Then how about you make it into an NFT yourself? I've even said that to one of the guys. I was like, just buy the painting, and then you go get it scanned, and you turn it into an NFT, and then it'll be worth $9,000 or whatever. Oh, no, we don't do that. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Here's one more I wanted to show you guys, too, just before we get out of here. Bang. So NFT is a non-fundable token or something. Uh, what it stands for is scam, 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 NFT. <laughs> no, there are some legit NFTs. Like you buy them, it's like Bitcoin, but for art, right? And you buy them um, and then you can sell them. Like you buy the rights to that whole thing. You own the whole artwork, right? So if this was an NFT, and you bought it, basically means I have to shred the original so there's no original copy of it. And then you, that's, that becomes your valuable token is that thing that you bought, right? It, just like Bitcoin, um, total scam, if you ask me, total scam. Oh, sign up to this site. I go, nah, what about this site? And they go, uh, oh no, well, you know, I've had bad experiences through that site. So you should just use the site that we use now. I've never had a bad experience through this site. You should sign up through this one. They go, okay, I'll do that. Because I almost did. I almost did. I was hurting so badly for money. And this person wanted to pay me like 10 grand in NFTs. And I was like, bro, where do I sign? Sign me up. Sign me up. I need this. Like, what a godsend. Oh, thank you. Just, it came at the perfect time for you to screw me over. 
You know what I mean? Like, because that's all it is. It's just a scam. It's just a scam. So thank you. I appreciate that. This one turned out fantastic. Turned out fantastic. No, they do. They ruin it for everyone. It's the same as uh, every, any, it's, don't get, uh, you want to know the other thing that I get the most is uh, we would like to pay you to um, place ads on your Facebook page. We would like to pay you $7,000 per ad or $300 per ad or $2,000 per ad or whatever per ad. Our brands that we represent are Nike, Puma, Adidas. I literally, I could show you 50 emails with exactly the same text. It's like they literally copy and paste it from the last dumbass that used it. And they're like, oh, this got somebody used that one. You're like, oh my God, dude. So nobody wants to pay me to put uh, uh, ads on my 450,000 member or follower Facebook page. Nobody wants to pay you to put it on your 500 follower. But don't get scammed, please, please. I've not had one person that came to me legitimately and said, we want to put ads on your page you know, and be actually for real. Not one, not one. And I have a half million followers on Facebook, not one single one. Please don't fall for this crap. Don't fall for the NFT crap. Don't fall for none of it. None of it. Don't click on anything. Don't send anything to anybody. Don't accept ad invites, nothing, right? There's a way you can do it on Facebook, okay? Harry Potter in the woods would be cool. So there is a way that you can, that a legitimate company We'll do it, right? Anytime you ask these other guys, you're like, okay, well, what's your what's your uh, your business ID number? I can literally do nothing with your business ID number. All it is is an ID number that attaches to you from me, right? So I put in your business ID number into my little Facebook thing through the incredibly hard to understand meta garbage over there. So you put it all in and then you send them an invite to then come back at you with the ads, right? There's a legit way to do it. And you ask these scammers and you're like, okay, give me your, uh, your business ID. Oh, well, I, I don't have access to that. Uh, yeah, you do. So I always say, I'm like, give me your business ID. Anything that you write beyond a bunch of numbers, I'm going to consider you a scammer. That's like, I have it copied and pasted. Provide your business ID or off. How about that? That's what I do, right? Let's see. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, all right. I love you guys. Um, yeah. Don't get fooled by the scammers. You guys have an awesome night. I'll be back uh, tomorrow at some point, probably during the day. Maybe like noonish, one-ish. All depends. I'm going to go buy dog beds and stuff. So, love you guys. Good night, everybody. Uh, everyone needs sleep except for me. I have to go edit. I'm still probably a month, maybe a month and a half now behind. Oh God, at least I never run out of content, right? Always have something new to post because Josh is about 45 paintings ahead of what I'm editing. Actually, what was the last one that I edited? It was, uh, trying to like picture it in my iPad screen. You know, you're, like I'm pulling up my iPad, like all the photos. You know what I mean? All the little blocks that I'm going, where is that video that I just edited? What was it? Oh, it was this. Yeah, see, that's how I got to do it. It's the square one, uh, the square seascape with like blue sky and then a blue and purple wave, but then like a brown tan bit of the wave in the front. So that was like, God, I hope it was in the 800s at least. I hope it was in the 800s. I don't even know. I don't even want to know. I don't even, I don't even want to know how far behind I am. So. Good night, guys. I love you. Have a blessed night. God bless everybody. Um, God bless America. Red, white, and blue. Bingo, bango. Um, you guys are all fantastic. I love every single person who tunes in, who comments, who shares, who taps the screen, who buys a painting, who buys a poster, who buys a shirt or a hat, or just sends me a, a, a you know, hope you're having a good day comment. Like, I love you guys. I love every single person. So uh, without you guys, there would be no Paint With Josh. There would be no Paint With Josh LLC. Did you guys know I'm a, I'm a registered Nevada business now? Woo! An actual grown-up with a, with a business. I own a business. Yeah. What? Sorry. What did you say? I own a bit. Did I hear you right? Because I still feel like I'm 17. Like, in my heart, I am a 17-year-old kid who is very selfish, likes to do what I want to do only, and if your plans don't line up with my plans, I get pissed. Okay? I'm a, I'm a total child. I'm 17 in my heart. 
and I'm a business owner? What? All right. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't. I, yeah. It's unreal. It's literally unreal, the amount of people and just how fast everything has happened. If these freaking deals, oh my God. God, I want to tell you guys about so much and I can't even, I'm like, good. And I know if DC, my manager's watching, he's like, don't, don't say anything, Josh. Don't say it. Swear to God, Josh, don't say anything. So he's sitting there watching and I'm like, <laughs> oh man, there's such big things going on, guys. <sighs> Gigantic things are going on. Gigantic. Enormous. Enormous things are happening. Enormous things are happening. I just want to check my emails like right now. <laughs> Enormous things. So. Uh, things I can't talk about yet, but I love you guys. You guys know I will always tell you everything. I'm always super uh, forthcoming and transparent, I guess is the word. Um, everything, everything. I always tell you guys. So, yeah, you don't know what it is, but uh, you're excited. You should have seen me when I got the email. I was like, woo! Woo! Sort of. Just me in my garage by myself. <laughs> but yeah, it was sort of like that. Um, yeah. It was cool. So cool. I can't wait to start talking about it and tell you guys about it. So I love you. And uh, until I see you guys again next time, um, I'm going to try to come down off of the excitement of this show and all the good news and, you know, try to go to bed at some point. So I love you guys and um, take care. Have the rest of a good evening. And until I see you guys again next time, take care. Have the rest of a good day.